Hi everybody, I'm back with my husband, biochemist Dr. Bill Curtin, and uh, we're continuing our conversation about uh, testing for the COVID-19 virus, particularly because we had a question from Linda Perez about um, the reports of false positives and false negatives in these tests. And um, so I was asking Bill about how this happens and, and what it means. Um, thanks, Bill. Sure. And so uh, false positives and false negatives. Uh, <clears throat> so <clears throat> the, the uh, situation is one where in any kind of, of uh, science and any kind of test that one might be performing, there's always going to be the possibilities for the introduction of errors into that final result. And the possibilities, the areas where you might find errors in this particular case, start with the collection of the sample. Uh, if that is not done properly, uh, so that the so-called chain of custody uh, is followed closely, there's always the possibility of the sample getting contaminated somewhere along the way if it's not handled properly. And when, since we're trying to uh, extract RNA from the virus uh, and, and then make DNA copies of that, practically everything that we touch has some DNA on it from some source. And so if, if uh, the sample comes in contact with extraneous DNA, that contaminates the sample and that could lead to a false positive. In addition, once you get the sample to the lab, you have uh, <clears throat> multiple steps that have to be done, mixing of reagents, measuring of solutions, and, uh, uh, and the multiplication process to produce many copies of the, of the uh, DNA. Um, you have to go through the cycle 40 or 50 times, and each one of those steps and each one of those cycles has a certain amount of error associated with it. Uh, <clears throat> we get machines to, to do a lot of the measuring, but even there, there is error in, in, the, uh, in those measurements themselves. So um, when you couple all this together, um, there's always going to be, the, the, the final result is not going to be 100% accurate in any case. How accurate is it? We don't know for sure uh, because there hasn't been enough data collected on the, on the tests that are currently being used, uh, but I've seen numbers that uh, suggest right now uh, there are 30% of the tests might yield false negatives or positive. But uh, that's only one estimate, and again, we need more data on that. And for the time being, I think the tests that are being produced are, are highly reliable, and one, one can be confident in the results that are produced. Great, thanks. It's really reassuring uh, in this <laughs> uncertain time. Uh, and if anybody else has any questions, I bet Bill would be able to address them. Thanks again. Bye. Bye-bye.